This I'd say would be pretty clean. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does dry mean? If I'm on a date, okay. right? Yeah. Um, what should I not order with seafood or not order with steak? Mm -hmm. You know what goes with what? Welcome to Eight at the Table. Tonight we're gonna be having somewhat of a sommelier. We're gonna be learning about different wines and some first date etiquette. You know, for your man or for your lady. During a date. Or for your yeah. non-gender, whatever you guys are into. It's a no judgment zone. No judgment zone. I kind of mix the wine, so I'm kind of bougie with the wine. I actually like Sancerre wine, mm -hmm. which is a mixture in a conundrum. I, I, I drink that too. Wait, what is it? Wait. Sancerre, yeah, Sancerre. which is very hard to find. It's rare, but it tastes good. It's a white wine. Okay. And I drink Conundrum, which is a bunch of wines all mixed together. I drink Sangria 21. <laughs> <laughs> I drink that too. <laughs> now, so we were talking about, I know that before in the panel, we were talking about like how some people here don't like Chardonnay. Chardonnay is disgusting to me. And it's it's like a, a old, like sad mom. Yeah. <laughs> like, so like, I, I agree, right? Like there's a bunch of different Chardonnays. You know what I'm saying? So maybe the one that you might try might be gross. You know, for you, everybody's different, right? My personal one, like I like to eat a salmon with a cake, bre cake bread Chardonnay, mm. especially if you have like a dill sauce because it's kind of tart, right? Mm -hmm. And then the cake bread Chardonnay is more like sweet and buttery. Okay. So like it's actually better from like my opinion, of course. Mm -hmm. It's actually better to drink that that wine with certain foods. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Now. Would you drink that with a steak? Absolutely not. I would not recommend it. I think you would drink red wine with a steak. That's Definitely. What, yeah, only yeah, that's yeah. what they taught me. I think red, red wine, wine tastes good. Like that. That I little, tried it like, before. That little bitterness and that like nastiness that you guys are saying about uh, Chardonnay, like when you guys do like wine tastings, uh, that kind of like nasty taste is called dirty. So like politically speaking, mm. like when you taste something like funny about a wine it's not because it's like a bad wine it's just the way it's aged um it's it's called dirty but okay. so it's and meant to taste that way though. yeah it is meant to taste okay. it is okay. meant to and taste how are, that way. but how are you supposed to know what goes with what like you're just gonna be sitting here trying different foods and different wines all the time like i'm not a wine drinker i don't so. know i need to learn more about seafood what do you drink with seafood it's just like i don't even know how to order the right wine with certain foods i'll be feeling like like you know on a, a date i'm like what do i order so I have so many questions, like, <laughs> what is a wine for me, seafood, dessert, why is it called certain names? Like, I need answers. Papo, let's bring out our guest, who is also a wine expert, so we can get all the wine oh, facts. <laughs> Hi, how's everyone? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's, going on? Hi. What's your name? So my name is Alana. Alana. And uh, I'm a sommelier and a wine consultant, which means I talk to people about wine all the time, which is... Pretty awesome. Oh, what I a really great like job. It. You get, <laughs> it well, you get free money. A, a little bit, okay. yeah. <laughs> You're a wine promoter. A wine promoter, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So um, we all have a lot of questions, obviously, mm -hmm. you know, and I know Guapo has a lot of questions as well, okay. specifically. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let him go ahead and ask you the first one. Cool. Well, I want to add not the regular one about the food, because I'm sure you'll get into that. I want to know why do certain regions taste different than others, and why does champagne say cognac on it? Okay, so those are both really good questions, okay? So what I like to say about why wines from different regions taste different than others, okay? The best way I can explain it to you, all right? Let's say there's a grape, right? Let's pretend it's a Merlot grape, just for this example, okay? And let's say that Merlot grape could grow in three different places, all right? If it was a person, and they were growing up in Memphis, Tennessee, or Brazil, 
or Guadalajara, okay? Let's just say three different places. Obviously, that person, or in this case, the grape, right, if you're following me, is gonna sound different than the other two, it's gonna look different than the other two, their fashion will probably be different, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so what I say, right, is that when you are drinking a wine, you're picking up on its accent, basically, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know how you can hear someone talk and you can be like, are you from Philadelphia? You know, it's 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 that sort of a thing. That's how wines can taste different from different places. So did I maybe yes. that uh, better better so explains cognac, it. So cognac. Yeah. Now, is it true that a wine can be called cognac if it's not from a certain area? Correct. It can only be called cognac if it's from the designated cognac area in France. Okay. And yes. See, I told exactly. Same way about champagne, right? You got to grow your grapes in champagne. In champagne, right? Oh. That's correct. That's correct. That's well, why, yeah, for a long time. Do you guys remember the commercial, uh, the champagne's not Corbel? Do you guys remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. right? Technically, Corbel's not allowed to be called champagne, all right? That's why they don't say it anymore. Champagne can only come from the champagne region. So why is it always says cognac? The cognac is saying the type of wine you're going to drink. It's really not wine cognac. It's, it's, it's distilled, okay? It's a spirit that you're drinking. But the reason that the name champagne is on there is because the grapes are coming from the champagne region. So when are we going to get to taste this stuff? Whenever you want. Pause them too long. Whenever you want. Right Show here, us the guys. Show the best one for a nice steak dinner. Yeah. yeah. Oh. All well, right. Let's see everything you have. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Like we're seafood. Gonna, you want me to line yeah, it like up seafood. first? Yeah. 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 Okay. Up. We'll line it up. Yeah. I like seafood. What, you, why come with seafood? What, with seafood? I am going to recommend this right here, oh, okay? That looks crazy. Right? That's yeah, great. Yeah. yeah. It is stuff. a Vino, Vino Verde. Verde, okay? Mm -hmm. It's from Portugal, okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you guys a really cool saying in the wine industry when I pour it for you why I chose this wine. And it's going to stick with you all. So you're going to you're going to definitely be like, "All right, now I now I get what you did." That sounds so it. cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be ridiculous. People won't yeah. recognize you after this tasting because you'll Whoa. know so much, right? Okay. That's what I think. What's yeah. one of your favorite wines? Um, one of my favorite wines, I love Portuguese wine. Yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. And the other one I like is actually a wine called Cabernet Franc. No, no, I mean like, is there like, for example, yeah. this one is a Verde, but this is called Caso Garcia. So if I was right. going to a store, mm -hmm. what, like, what would be the name of that Portuguese wine that you are... Like love. Yeah, so what you're looking for in that case is you want it to say Vino Verde, okay? Oh. This is the brand, all right? So this is like if you're buying a cola, this is either Coke or Pepsi up here, mm -hmm. right? And this is just cola down Now, is that wine gonna be like readily available in most restaurants? Yes, Vino Verde is, is, has really blown up. If you'd asked me 10 years ago, I'd be like, eh, not as many people know about it. It's just starting to pick up steam, but this has picked up a lot, Vino okay. Verde. Yeah, definitely. Now we have a few glasses on the table and we were just talking about the Vino Verde. Which glass would we be using for this type of wine? Yeah, so what you would want to use is one of the ones that have a smaller, what we call this as a bulb, basically, okay? okay? So we would do that for a white wine. Red wines usually need spaces that are a little bigger so that they can breathe and, and so on. Okay? What about this one, this glass? I like that one. All right, so that one is definitely for our two reds that we have today. So okay. we've got this Chianti, and then we've also got a cool Cabernet that's going to be coming as so well. So a bigger yeah. glass lets a, a bolder red. wine breathe and you get to enjoy the aromas better. Exactly. exactly. And a white wine is more reserved for a condensed glass. Correct. That's a great I never thing to learn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So that's amazing. Yeah, definitely. So pouring wine, I always see them tilt the glass. Yes. To a, now, I'm assuming it makes no splash. Yeah. And it doesn't bubble up. Is that why they do that? Yeah, that, that is why they do that. Because they don't want it to bubble up. And that's what's sparkling wine too, right? Mm -hmm. Because like... Everybody's had that experience where you pour and it just shoots straight up and you're like, oh no. So this way, if you hit the side of the glass with the wine, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. It's going to go slower. You can control it more, and you're not going to have the same foamy kind of head. Okay. All right. I was just trying to look fancy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe that too. I don't know. <laughs> always, you know, why do they put their nose inside the wine first to smell, smell it before they drink it? Yeah. Sure. So they shake it up too, like a little shake. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. Right. So it does. It helps to expand the smell. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. And you, your palate is something too, right? Exactly. So what you want to do, if you guys want, I can. there's S's in wine tasting. If you want to walk through that, S's. we can talk about that. We want to walk through the shower. Can we run through that after we start drinking? Yeah. <laughs> and I noticed the last thing that like, S point out. Why do I always pour a half a glass of wine, never a, like a whole hefty cup? I always see a small glass, like mm -hmm. consider cool. Is that yeah. Why is that? You mean like in a restaurant? The, or, yeah, I never yeah. see a glass get filled with wine. It's usually halfway to a one fourth. Or like a third. A third, like four. Like, yeah. Is that normal? Is that how it's supposed to be served? Yes. So basically, what they want to do is they want room so that you can swirl the wine. All right. Mm -hmm. And if they filled it all the way, you can't swirl it because it's going to pour all over. And also, it can also do with like, let's say there's six of you sharing a bottle of wine. They're not going to pour. They can't pour all the way full mm. of glasses in that case. So it could be that, too. So you would serve Vino Verde and other white wines as well as sparkling wines cold. That's what you want to do. How do you feel about the rosé wines that they have now? There's a lot of like wines mixed with rosé infusion. Yeah. 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 That's what those. Yeah, go ahead. I want to hear you talk about this. Not me. <laughs> no, I, I want to hear you drink guys it. have to say. I hear it. Look, in the urban world, we yeah. tend to like go towards rosé themed champagnes yeah, exactly. and wines. Right. Okay. So I'm asking you like in the wine world, like is that looked down upon all these rosé infused things or is rosé the new thing? Thing is it like, is it like a new like the uh, fad? Verde, like the I see rosé a lot in all kinds of wines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so rosé is really picked up a lot in the last, I'd say, five to ten years. It really got a lot bigger. Before then, you're right, rosé. People were like, eh, they didn't take it seriously, mm -hmm. right? They only looked at it if it, they thought of it as only like white Zinfandel. If you guys, you know, mm -hmm. remember that people don't buy that that much anymore, right? But now rosé has gotten really hot because yeah. all you have to do to make a rosé is basically not leave the red skins of a wine, of the wine grapes, right, in the mix as long as you would for a red. So oh. you stop that sooner, okay? Mm. You stop that period sooner, now the color is lighter, and the wineries can send those wines out faster mm. and, you know. Less time. And Hold up. Exactly. So rosé wow. is less exactly. time and they can make their money quicker. Yo. I go to restaurants, I drink straight tequila, straight. She lit. She afraid. I do not. <laughs> she lit. Now, now we said the same thing. I just said tequila. She I lit. do not drink wine. This vino verde, is this something that I would like? Is it very Vino verde. Oh, I was Vino verde. Vino verde. Vino verde. She didn't see Vino verde. Is this something I would like? You yeah. know, is it very strong or is this very sweet? Like, can How you describe it? So it's a little bit fruity, I would say. Yeah, That's yeah. the best word to say it. And honestly, I know this sounds like you're like, ugh, give me a better answer than this. You'll only know. I would love to taste, taste it. <laughs> Don't worry, it looks like more than it is when I pour. So, like, she ain't pouring it like fancy how they do in a the restaurant, though. I'm doing, I'm doing a very, uh, <laughs> this, yes. Well, there's only four cups, guys, so. <laughs> we need, we got, we, no, 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 we can put it in the other. You guys are such There's no, right, no laws. Cheers to the ones that got it. Thank you. I got one. Only on camera, I'm doing this shit. I don't know if I would have drank the last time. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Y'all ready? Hold up. Smell it. I got that vina vera vici. It's a vina vera. Oh, it's not like Sancerre. It's like to me, no? It's crisp like Sancerre. I love this. This is like See, you are right about seafood. Having garlic, having a strong garlic meal or a strong meal with basil and seasoning, this will definitely like clear your whole palate. Yeah. Definitely. I sound like I know what I'm talking about, right? I'm not I mean, a fan of this. does taste like that for real. So first of all, as of a non-wine drinker, tell me. It tastes horrible. It's yeah, <laughs> this is, I'm not I a love this. It shit. tastes I'm so bad. bad. It's very tart. And it's like, I, I, it. I feel like it's very I like salty. salty. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I love it. It gives me like pickles. Yeah. yeah. It gives me like pickles. If you put some fruit in this, that's harsh. If you put a berry in this, a strawberry, raspberry, 
Anything yeah. is delicious. Yeah. With salmon, seafood, or strong yeah. seafood dish, this will what definitely it? wash them out. Like I don't know, guys. I think it's into my tequila. So I don't know. She wants some right. sangria. <laughs> so, She's Puerto Rican. <laughs> who, who, would, who would drink okay. this again? I want to know. Reason I'm going to drink would. it again. Okay, I'll cool. Cool. All right. And I just, this wine, right, is grown in a northern part of Portugal, okay? And it's grown right near the sea, okay? Oh. The salty breezes come right. in, like and exact and like and all little things like that influence so the wine. So he a salty ass So he picked up on that. <laughs> you said Cheers tart, salt world. right? Yeah. And one of the things you smell and taste, right, it's not in the wine, but you smell and taste it, are things like lime, okay? And like a Granny Smith, like a green apple, that kind of a thing. Exactly, mm. exactly. I taste the green apple. Yes, you taste you it. Sure do. You taste I do it. So what, are, what are some of the other elements that you would find in a white wine? Cause mm -hmm. I know in like certain wines, you'll pick up on things other than like fruits. Mm -hmm. um, like nuts or like oak. Yeah. Uh, so what are some things that you find in like White. Or she said this. nuts. Yes, <laughs> you'll Children. you'll find different things depending on what you're drinking. Basically, right? It's because there's so many different grapes in the world. There's literally thousands of different. What's grapes. the best grape? Oh, I don't. Know. That's like what's saying what's grape? the best food. What's right? your best grape? Like the most quality, sweetest, juiciest grape. Like Tupac said, "Dark and the berry." I don't know. <laughs> you know, look. If you ask people in the wine world, like you know, the ones that might be like. A little too snobby for your taste, but whatever. The one they will tell you that their favorites: red Pinot Noir and white That's Riesling. Right. Actually, like I don't taste garlic, but I hate when I'm eating a seafood dish. Yeah, the seafood kind of like it overpowers the dish. This could give you a refresher sip, and each bite could be a new bite. It just sounds corny, but it's Some really true. Yeah. What should I not order with seafood or not order with steak? Mm -hmm. You know what goes with what? Yeah. You know, if I try, I don't look. You know, like, I don't know what I'm Look, talking out. about. <laughs> okay. What are the do nots for the do -not a fish for... and wine pairing? Like, for yeah. seafood, what's a do not order? Okay. Oh, perfect English. All right. So we're talking about seafood that I'm assuming there's, like, no cream sauce, right? We're talking just, like, kind of... Flounder, crab legs, lobster, shrimp, yeah. shrimp yeah. sea bass. Cool. <laughs> sea bass. All right. So we're talking straight seafood like that. We want a white, want. crisp wine like this, okay? And that's because when a dish is kind of light and crisp like that, you want something that's going to be able to, as you were saying, refresh your palate, right, in between, okay? But it's also not going to overpower what you're eating, all right? You want them to be kind of on equal footing. Whereas the steak wine, which I'm happy to jump into if you guys want to do a comparison yeah. now, all right? Yeah. The steak wine is going to be a Cabernet from California, all right? Okay. And Sonoma steak, Valley. what we're going to do... Mm. Um, but that tastes good. This is yeah. California oh. decoy. This is widely available, okay. this uh, brand. So almost anywhere in the US you can get this guy. His age for how long? Now, is that important for the viewers? Like the age, like the year on the wine? Is it like important to have a certain amount of years? So <laughs> it's funny because um, the, the answer is it's a matter of taste, all right? Some people like to let their wines hang out for a while, okay? Because over time, the wine's gonna calm down a little bit. All right. smoother. Exactly. That's why you always hear the saying, aging like a fine wine, mm. right? Because as it as it gets older, it gets a little softer, a little more approachable. You know, you always hear about that young guy who was crazy when he was young, but now he's like this content. All right, there you go. But now he's like more content and mellow. Well, he had to age like fine wine. Exactly. You know what I'm saying I'm aging like fine wine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even age. He's still yeah. young. He's still why young. Why is it that um, like more... American wines, like U.S. wines, mm -hmm. their their years are always more recent. Like they never have like older years like France and like Portugal. So for years, a lot of the California wineries, you know, keep in mind, California is much younger area of growing wine than the rest of the world, right? I, or especially Europe, right? Europe's literally been doing it for centuries, if not like millennia, right? So in the U.S., Wine production only started getting more serious in the middle of the last century, 
Okay, so at the beginning, um, the wines weren't really designed to age as long. That was the hope, eventually, right? But that's that's part of the reason too. The older a wine is, the more prestigious it is. Yeah, ho hopefully. I mean, you you can go too long and have a wine that you're like, this is like, it's over. Yeah. It's like yeah. aged meat. Like you some aged, aged it? Like right. some, some meat in some restaurants, like some top flight restaurants, their meat is aged a minimal of 30 days. Right. Like some of their aged prime ribs. Dry but some meat. do 60 days. Some push the limit to it because yeah. it gives the meat like a funky taste. So <laughs> I, I guess wine is kind of the same type of thing. It's yeah. a taste preference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is the bottle so dark? Is it like to, to keep the sun out of it for sun damage? Very frequently, yes. The bottles That's are a meant good to question, be dark. Yes. I don't know all this while she's here. Right. Remember, like the sun, even in beer, it comes in a green or a brown bottle. I think the sun could affect the taste, correct? Absolutely. And that's for white wine, too. But, you know, right, white wine is meant to be drunk earlier than red. So you do want to protect Sorry. all wines, right? Oh, it's going this way. All right. I actually apologize. Lauren Hill, everybody. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. This one smells a thousand times better than the last one. Okay. Hey, this barrel with chard inside. So when I okay. smell it like that, does is it chard like, inside? Yeah. No, I'm wrong. And is it what? Is yeah. this barrel inside chard? I smell like a, a woody. Yeah. Then, then when I twirl this around, when it comes down, this is called legs. That's correct. And she said the legs can tell you sometimes how old the wine is or how, how it's been aged. Yes. So, so what the legs do really is the legs tell you how heavy Strong. this wine mm. is going to be, mm. essentially. So a heavy yes. downpour. Yeah. yeah, so the thicker it is, the, really the, the pieces of them, so the more that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, legs. the legs are significant. What does that mean as far as the quality of the wine? More legs, less legs? I have to tell you the truth, it yeah, means no difference oh, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. There was a big myth for a long time that people said, oh, you know, especially if you watch like a lot of 80s movies, they're always going, oh yes, it has good legs. You know, they'll say something like that. But the truth is, the whole side it they doesn't say. it doesn't change the taste no. of the wine oh at God. all or the it's quality. So Before I sip this, yeah. what should a, the average person look for in a in a quality red wine to right. know its quality? Can okay. we cheers? Yeah, we can. Because they already had it already. They already had it. She just wants mad dog and tequila. I don't right? like yeah, this. Right? Mad dog okay, and tequila. Cool. And Cisco. That's and cool. Cisco. Remember I'm Cisco, like the pink bottle? That was a good one. Thank you, thank you. Oh my God! This is good. Great time. Yeah. Yeah. Smoky. Yeah, you like it. Yeah. Everyone on the right, cheers to Cisco. So cheers. Those, like my Agra back in the day, I tell you. <laughs> See, this leaves like a dry taste in, in my mouth. Yes. Okay, so this is dry. Yo, so she what, some good -ass wine. what you're looking for, right? Um, because you would ask, how do we hold the glass, right? You want to hold it by the stem and you want to swirl it like that. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we hold it by the stem is that if you hold it by the bowl or the bulb, it changes the temperature of the wine. Oh my God. Oh. You were saying that, like if you see I'm little hot, pieces no. in the wine and stuff like that, right? <laughs> no, right. But no, we were specifically <laughs> talking aftertaste. about Chardonnay and we okay. were talking about I'm the sweating. like aftertaste um, mm -hmm. that Chardonnay gives. Mm -hmm. And I kind of described that as dirty. Um, this I'd say would be pretty clean. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. What does dry mean? Okay, so really easy when your throat get dry. Correct. Correct. You see, she did you guys not let already you knew. <laughs> She's being funny. You guys don't even need me. You knew all this. She's okay? funny. Um, <laughs> I figured that's what. <laughs> but what does it mean? Like, oh, this is yeah. dry wine. I right. know what that means. Yes. So basically, under the top. Dry. This is really dry, thought, right. Sarah. Like, like, oh this. God, it's right. so dry. Can I say this is a wet wine? <laughs> Get her a normal season one. She, uh, she won. Get her some tequila. Now. Get her some kerosene. <laughs> so dry wine, right? The best way to tell is this a dry wine. I mean, on the first sip, if you feel a dryness in your mouth, it's pretty dry. But an interesting way to kind of test that out is after you take the sip, put your tongue to the roof of your mouth, and if you feel that sort of like vacuum dryness for a second, you've got a dry wine. I'm gonna say like, like a medium dryness, right? Like, yeah, it's not really dry. I don't feel what dryness, but but am I right on your standards? Yes, it is I, medium I'm smarter dryness. Than yeah. If it were super <laughs> right dry, you would you guys wouldn't be like, how do I tell if this is dry? You no, you you would know, right? Yeah. 
So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's right now. Choking. <laughs> decoy, can you tell us about that kind of wine? Yes. That name decoy? Brand? So, Decoy is from um, a winery called yeah, Duckhorn yeah, yeah. in California, and they have vineyards in Napa yeah, and Sonoma, which are two of the primary wine growing areas in California, are Napa and Sonoma. All right, they're the most popular, they're the most expensive in California, but Napa. it's a really perfect area for grapes to grow and make delicious wine. So, Decoy is one of their brands, and this wine is made from Cabernet Sauvignon, okay? Which is considered like the king of grapes, all right? And the reason you wanna have this when you're having steak, okay, because I, when I'm gonna talk about that, I'm gonna have you picture what this would be like with fresh seafood, and you're gonna, you're gonna get it, okay? What this wine has is something called tannin, okay? Tannin comes from the skin of grapes. It's these little, little pieces in grapes, okay? These little phenolic compounds, they call it, right? It's phenolic? Nice, what yeah, that? it's a nice snobby word you could say to your friends. You're like, I'm telling the phenolic compounds, you can say, all right? <laughs> it's just basically little grainy pieces, okay? Okay, it's like pulp. Almost. Like, like grape, yeah. Like a grape it's, pulp, but really yeah. small, but smaller but really and not visible small. to the eye. Exactly. So basically, all right, so those tannins, right? Tannins are great because that's why after a while, wines age, they get softer, they get better, yada, yada. But higher tannin, higher fat you can eat with it, all right? So steaks have a higher fat content, right? We wish they didn't, but they do. That's why they taste so good, right? And so we want to have a wine that has high tannin in it as well. And Cabernet Sauvignon has higher tannin. All right? of them have it, or just this brand? Yes, for the majority. Yeah, all Cabernets, unless they're being you know manipulated some way in the vineyard, Cabernets are going to be a more high tannin wine. In Is general. it one word, Cabernet? Is it two words or just Cabernet? So it's Cabernet Sauvignon. See, that's the part I wanted to look at. Yes. So, so don't say one, say a Cabernet Sauvignon. So Correct, so Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon, right? there are. I like yeah. Cabernet Sauvignon because that's the best Sauvignon? one. Sauvignon? other ones that I don't like. Yeah. You don't like other ones. So, yeah, yeah, I like Sauvignon. All right. So like Cabernet Franc, not your friend. I never had Franc. All right. Yeah, okay. You said that. I do like that. I've never had that before. Yeah, yeah so that's I, cool. If I don't say Sauvignon, it yeah. won't be high in that stuff. Not, no, not true, not true. It's just, uh, it's the most recognized Cabernet grape out of all the Cabernet grapes. Oh, so Sauvignon is a grape. So it's, it's so it's like, it's almost like the last name, right? It's like oh, Cabernet okay. Sauvignon, right? Sauvignon. And so, yeah, and so that's, and usually I have to tell you, 95% of the time you say to somebody Cabernet, no one's gonna think you're not talking about Cabernet So, so it's a menu in yeah. a restaurant that has only like Cabernet, and then it's one for Cabernet Sauvignon also? Usually not. If it's listed as just Cabernet, they're probably talking about Cabernet Sauvignon. And if it is a def different Cabernet, it'll specifically say Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc. So I, I don't think I could date somebody who wasn't a wine drinker. I don't think they have to be a huge wine drinker, but I want somebody that I feel like we go out to a nice dinner, we're at yeah. home, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm by myself, you know, talking about uh -huh. it. It's just like, that's, you know, whatever. So yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Do you drink like hard alcohol? I do. <laughs> What's your preference? <laughs> yeah. Um, I like, I love gin. gin. Love gin. I like gin yeah. too. You look like a gin, yeah. Wow, I do. When did you start doing this and why? Yeah. So I started doing this. I studied abroad in Italy in college. Mm -hmm. And then I took some wine classes. Like you were saying earlier, I went to school with a big hospitality school. Mm -hmm. And so I took wine classes there when I came back. Then I came back to New York because I went to school in Boston. And then I just kept working in the wine industry and I kept learning. And then I went back to Italy, mm -hmm. got an MBA in food and wine in Bologna and came back. And I also have a sommelier certification. So that's my uh, When you order wine in a restaurant, they bring you the whole bottle to purchase or did they just pour you a glass and go put it back in the refrigerator? Like, you know what you you, you I got to a whole bottle? No. Yeah. Depends on what you want. You, you, you can buy the bottle or a glass. So they do serve wine in just glasses for the. Yeah, yeah it's on the yeah. menu. Yeah. yeah. Can wine get you really, really, really fucked up? Like alcohol does. Like, is it? Is there a specific wine that could get you really fucked up? 
I mean, uh, tipsy. It, it definitely can. What it kind? Definitely can. You ever had Snoop Taylor Porter get you dumb horny? I just told him. <laughs> you know no. what, Danny? I was just gonna say Taylor Porter. Yeah. No, but I was gonna say uh, Taylor Port. Uh, I definitely heard about that. I've never had that before. I Sounds before. dangerous. But if you want to get like not <laughs> like, like fucked up, no, but not. just like nice and liquor, go straight to your. This like is the wine. Videos. It's the wine. <laughs> yeah, because the telephone is worse than Hennessy. How about really? Some, how about that wine called Cold Red by uh, Big Mo, uh, um, what's his name? <laughs> Snoop Dogg. He has a wine called Cold oh, Red. Yeah, so Cold do, Red. Yeah. Do wine connoisseurs like look down upon like rappers that get into wine or or like actors or whatever? Well, I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it before. It's really good and strong. Look. Here's my feeling, right? This is what I always say about wine, and I mean this. If you like it, you're right, okay? So you could look down on a wine, but I bet you plenty of people who would look down on a wine, if they didn't know they were drinking, would go, what's this delicious wine I'm drinking, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, I'm sure that there are plenty of people who would look down to say, oh, it's it's being manufactured, you know, to taste a certain way, and that's why I don't like it, but... Honestly. But the world is changing now. And um, yeah. I'm a weed advisor. Uh-huh. I'm not a lot of consultants. <laughs> yes, okay. No, because like, times are changing right now. Yeah. And I'm getting ahead of the mm-hmm. curve. So mm-hmm. I consult people to get quality, you know, marijuana. And yeah. I kind of do what you do. I show them different <laughs> flavors. And I help them. And um, like, would they look down upon a marijuana-infused wine? Is that next? Would you be interested in like trying anything like that? I mean, you know what? Uh, it's... It's a lot of like red tape. Basically, it's a lot of legal laws that you'd you'd probably have to go through because, you know, wine to be called wine would have to be grapes, you know, basically. And so it would have to be a specific or at least the type of wine we're talking about. If it's not a grape wine, you have to say it on the label. But it was made with grapes, but infused with THC. Yeah, you just would have to say it on the label. That's you? All. you see, like with this wine stuff, <laughs> I'm, not, stuff I'm noticing this tart stuff mm-hmm. and like this berry stuff. It smells good, but it doesn't taste good to me. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, like it's a little tart and nasty and like, like you said, like dirty, whatever. I think that when it comes to wine, I probably like the more sweeter things mm-hmm. because I'm not familiar with it. Is there a sweet so, wine? Do you have a sweet wine? Oh, like what type Dessert of wine. is there? Is there a sweet wine question? there? Yeah, we, you must take it too long to ask. So I had, like, I'm two, asking three because questions. I'm curious and I would like to taste a sweeter wine. Oh yeah, well, is there? Go ahead, Daddy, forget what so you guys are saying. Is there a dessert wine? Does that even exist? A dessert wine? Yeah. Yeah. It exists right here in front of you. Yeah. A dessert I wine? This, oh yeah. See you open the wine. Yeah, Let's show people how to open the bar. Can we use the cork to open the bottle so we can just sure. show everyone how it's This cork. one's not a typical cork. That one is, so I can yeah. I can open that one for you guys. And sure. yeah, is that also a dessert wine too, though? No, no, this is a dry uh-huh. wine. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But don't worry, we're drinking all. So, so okay. So do we want <laughs> do we want to do the opening of the wine? But you can just open. Show can I open one at the the proper way? So, um, okay, so what you want to do is you cut under here, which mm. is the lip, mm-hmm. it's called, okay? That's what you want to do. Um, you are far less likely to have any strange sort of injury. I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys where you have opened a bottle of wine and the label was a cut a little strange and it was sharp and really, really cut you. So that's much more likely to happen if you cut it in the wrong place, okay? Whereas the lip, sorry, this open is a little bit too rusty. Uh, whereas the lip really is the perfect place to do it. And once you get it up and off of this, you can pop the lip part right off, okay? And also it won't get, I apologize, my opener is not what it used to be. Um, the lip, will help you pop this off in a little circle like that, okay? Okay. And so now you've got this whole part exposed, okay? You and stick it in. right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. You want to put the cork in the center, okay? You do, uh, not the cork. You want to put the cork screw in the center, okay? And then you push down, okay? Twist, all right? And it's funny, before I really got into wine, I hated these openers. I always used, you know, the butterfly ones that are really popular. Yeah, they're cool. I like those. Yeah, they're great. Those are, those are for us. They're I not prefer skilled. those. I actually <laughs> just got an <laughs> electric <laughs> wine opener for Christmas. Oh, you did? Yeah. Which one? It works really well. I don't I don't know the brand. Um, that sounded messy. But it's, <laughs> you put it on top and it 
it does the lip part. It yes. cuts the lip part, and then you like press the button, and then it just pulls the cork up by itself. Oh, that's oh yeah. Oh, that's cool. So that's you drink really a lot cool. of wine. So what are you doing? Okay. Yeah. They use all this. Yeah, shit. some winies over there. Yeah. Wine, 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 winies. <laughs> yeah, some winies. It's more yeah. like Amanda. So wine. <laughs> You're a tequila. You know what you are. Tequila. <laughs> tequila. A tequila. So then you've got these little hinges, which help you, right? And you push like that, and then you have the second hinge, and that's what really helps you, right? So you grip onto the hinge itself, and you hold here, pull it up, one, two, three. Voila. Voila.